so welcome to today's video. I wanted to do a video sort of giving you quick reviews of some of the products that I have been testing out. Some products I've had for several months. Some products are more recent within the last month, two months, but the majority of them I've used for more than a month and I've used them pretty consistently to actually be able to give you my full review and thoughts. I'm gonna to try to kind of speed through this as quickly as I can, just so that I can get through these products and kind of give you the important pieces of information about each of these products so that if you are considering them, it helps make that uh, purchase decision easier for you. So I'm gonna start with, I guess maybe in the order that I would apply them, I'm gonna start with the foundation and it is the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. I'm actually wearing this today. I wear the shade 2.5. So I think one of the most common things that you will see in the reviews of this product, if you read them or watch video reviews, is the shade ranges and matching online. I did read that in some of the reviews on the Sephora website because I was trying to figure out what shade to match myself and kind of figuring out if I could find swatches of these colors because they just seem a little bit off online. So I actually went in store to look for some products that were sold out of it, so I did get some things, but then I decided to sort of swing by the hourglass section of Sephora, and there happens to be a Sephora employee there, and she asked me if I needed help, and I said, you know, I'm really having some difficulties with this. I'm trying to find a match, and I don't really have a lot of time to actually sit down and let her put this stuff on my face. So I kind of thought, let me just see if she could kind of eyeball it and just kind of look at my skin and then help me. And she was actually very helpful. And we landed on 2.5. I feel like it's a little misleading online, so you might have better luck going into the store and asking an employee there at Sephora to help you with this or if your local Ulta also carries it, mine does. But for some reason, 2.5 was sold out online, sold out in store, my Ulta didn't have it. So it's a very popular foundation. So when it was in stock, I finally decided to order it online. And I do think it's a really pretty formula. I will say that a very small amount goes a long way. One pump is enough to give me the look that you see here today on camera. It is a very flawless, a very perfected look. I feel like if I go too much beyond that one pump, it can look a little heavy in certain areas where I have dryness, maybe some texture. So around here, like my jaw, and chin area. I have a little bit of texture here um, in this upper region where I put highlights. So if I do too much in that area or even around the nose, you will kind of start to see it sort of clinging. But I think that one pump is really great. I did use it today with a damp beauty sponge and it's beautiful. I've also been using my BK Beauty 101 brush a lot lately to do my complexion products and it works just as great. So it's a really nice formula. I feel like I'm talking quite a bit about spending a lot of time on this one product, but it's foundation, so it needs to have its time for me to kind of give you the reasons why I really like it. I would say the drawback is the undertones, going person, and then really using a very minimal amount. Um, and then sort of, like today, I kind of built it up in my cheek area just to see what would happen. And it did build up quite nicely. I didn't layer more everywhere else because again, it there's that fine line between looking perfected and smooth and even to going a little bit too much. So you kind of have to play with it, but overall I do think it's a really nice formula and I will continue to use it and share it with you in a future tutorial, but I've been really enjoying that and I think it looks really, really pretty and it wears well throughout the day. So this next complexion product is an absolute hard no. Um, I have been wanting to try this for some time. I kind of was going back and forth with whether or not I should or shouldn't because I did try the concealer within the same range and it's a serum based product and I just didn't have the best, I don't know, experience with the concealer. The shade was just off, the formula just it was a little, I don't know, just I was not vibing very well with the concealer, but something about it just kept kind of grabbing my attention, this specific product. And then when I saw that it was during the 21 Days of Beauty last fall, I think it was September, and I was just a few days before having my son and my due date was approaching and I saw that and I was like, you know, what? I'm going to order that and maybe try it after, you know, I have the baby and get settled and stuff. And then months go by and I just recently started playing around with it and I just can't get on board with it. It's the 
uh, KVD, the Good Apple uh, Foundation Balm. I just can't. I purchased the shade Light 008, and it's a good match. Um, it seems quite yellow. I'm looking in the viewfinder. It seems a little dark and quite yellow, but when I apply it, it, it works just fine, and daylight, it matches my neck and my chest. So this just, I don't know, it was... It was easy to blend, however, it just sort of magnified every bit of imperfections or texture. Like I mentioned before, the chin around the nose, up in the top of the cheekbones. Those are some of my problem areas with texture, and I just feel like this sort of magnified that to a level where it, it looked really bad. And every time I looked in the mirror, I wanted to wash my face. I don't think I've ever had that experience with a foundation that it looks so terrible that every time I caught a glimpse of it in the mirror, I wanted to just wash my face so badly. It was just, it was really bad, you guys. I don't know what it is. I do have some dryness. I do have a little bit of oil on my nose. So my skin is more, I would say, combination than too dry or oily on the opposite end of the spectrum. So I feel like I just couldn't make this work. And I, I don't know if maybe exfoliating the night before and then applying it in the morning to more fresh smoother skin might be better but this just was not it was just no no like I just can't I can't recommend it and I don't even think I want to try it again because like I said every time I looked at myself in the mirror I wanted to wash my face and I love wearing makeup and I will put my makeup on in the morning and wear it until everybody goes to bed and then I will wash my face so for me to feel that way about this and for it to sort of look like my face was a piece of sandpaper, it was really bad. It's just, I don't know if I got a bad a bad one, a bad apple, <laughs> no pun intended, um, or if that's just what the formula is and what other people have experienced, but I just can't. So if you've tried this, is it good for you? Do you like it? Have you had a good experience? Are you experiencing the same thing I am? Like, let's just chat about it in the comments because I don't know, I, that is just, that's a no. Okay, so the next product is one that I could honestly just take it or leave it. I don't feel like it's, that huge of a difference in my routine that really makes me say, yes, I have to use this. And that's the brightener from Rare Beauty. I have the shade called Light and I like the packaging. It has that cooling metal tip, which is really nice. And I do take a moment to massage that tip under the eye and just kind of spread the product. I do think it's nice to wear on those absolute no makeup days, like just skincare and a little bit of this and that is it. And if I'm using it underneath foundation or I would say concealer, then it's one of those things where I don't really see a big difference. Like I can put this on and put my concealer over the top and then it just doesn't really, it doesn't change the look of my under eyes. It's not like, let's say my Charlotte Tilbury corrector that has more of a peach tone that really just knocks out all the discoloration. Just absolutely amazing. This is not quite like that. It is light, it blends well, it wears well under all of my concealers, but I just feel like it wasn't much of an impact underneath the eyes to say, yes, I have to keep repurchasing this. I'm gonna keep using it, yes, because I bought it, but is it one that I would recommend? No, I would probably say that if you wanted some sort of brightening or correcting under the eyes, go with the Charlotte Tilbury um, under eye corrector. Hands down, it's the best one that I've ever used, and just kind of, you know, not even spend the money on this. It, this one is obviously more affordable than Charlotte, but like I said, I don't have much of a of an impact with my under eye and the way it looks and wears to really say, yes, it's worth and I need to repurchase that. The next so. product, I wanted to try this specific powder because it has good ratings and I do enjoy the products that I've tried from this brand, especially the concealer. The concealer from this brand is just 10 out of 10. I'm wearing it today and it is just perfection. It's my favorite concealer. It's the Huda Beauty setting powder. I have the mini, I ordered it from Sephora. This is in the shade called Pound Cake. I think this powder is absolutely incredible. But let's talk about this packaging that you're seeing right here. This is the mini, this is a no. I don't like this packaging, this whole setup. I just, I can't get on board with this. You have to twist, like lift this sort of cap up. You have to twist it. If I could get it to twist and then you have a sponge tip so ideally if this was smaller it would probably be okay but there's a lot of powder around like a ring shape of on the sponge and the very center has nothing 
and it's just way too much product on here. And then it gets really messy. As you can see, I don't have to bring you closer for you to see how messy this gets. It gets everywhere. So I do kind of pour it out onto a makeup palette or even like a damp paper towel and then apply from there with a sponge or even a brush. The powder itself is beautiful. It literally gives you that perfected look. I'm wearing it today with the Huda Beauty um, Faux Filter Luminous Matte Concealer. The two of those together is just, it, it can't get any better. So the formula is 10 out of 10, would totally recommend it. I would say purchase the full size, not this mini, because this packaging is just a no. I don't like this packaging because it's so messy. It's just kind of bulky in your makeup bag or if you're traveling, it's just, no. The other thing that is something to note is that this does have a fragrance to it. Hopefully sometime in the future, they may come out with a fragrance-free option, but when I took the safety seal off for the first time, it was one of those moments where it just kind of hit me with the intense fragrance. Just the same as my Gucci bronzer and my Gucci blush. The moment I opened it for the first time, it was just like lots of fragrance. It does dissipate and go away. You don't smell it throughout the day, but it's something to know if you don't want fragrances in your products. Note that you will get that from this if you purchase okay. it. Next, in sort of keeping in line with the sort of flow of the routine, we talked about powders, under eye foundations, now is the contour and bronzing portion. This is the Sculpt Tape from Tarte. This is actually very good. We all know what this is supposed to be duping. Right here, Charlotte Tilbury Contour Wand. I have medium deep in Charlotte and soft bronze in Tarte. I did a video comparing both of them. And bottom line is they both perform the same way. They blend well. They look beautiful on the skin. They don't skip. They're not patchy. It just kind of comes down to your preference of color and price point. Charlotte is going to be more expensive than Tarte. Tarte has more color options. So that's already an advantage for this brand versus Charlotte. I'm partial to Charlotte because that is my favorite high-end brand. That is, I love it. Love the packaging, the formula, the overall look, the way the products wear, the way I feel when I use the products. I just love everything about it. So I love the Charlotte one, but I also really love this one and I would keep using it. I would recommend the Tarte one. And like I said, Soft Bronze is a perfect shade for me and I'm pretty fair. So I would say that if you can't get your hands on Charlotte or if you've been wanting this one and this is available from Tarte, pick it up. It's gonna give you pretty much the same result. I really don't see that huge of a difference to say, you know what, you have to go one way or the other. It really is, comes down to price point and your preference on brand and also the colors. So for blushes, I am wearing one of them today and I did feature this in a recent video where I was doing a celebrity makeup look and following one of the housewives that I keep up with on social media and on the housewife show on Bravo TV, and that is the blush from Laura Geller in Tropic Hues. This is the Baked Blush and Brighten. I actually really love the way this looks. I'm wearing it today. I adore the color. I like how it's marbleized, and I will show you up close in case you missed my last video. It is marbleized, so you can see all the pretty veining and colors. When you swirl your brush together, it gives such a beautiful kind of flush and natural color to the skin. It goes with any single look, whether it's a natural, soft look, whether it's full glam, whether it's kind of somewhere in the middle. It's a tone of color that goes with every look that I could possibly create and wear. And I do like using my Equal Tools brush to apply that. This is the, I think it's the Define brush. Yes, Define brush from Equal Tools. But I also like this small brush from BK Beauty, the 112, which is an angled, very wispy um, blush brush that you could use to apply this and it looks beautiful and it just lays so nicely on the skin. That's another thing about blushes that some of these formulas nowadays are improved where they just kind of look very soft like the other ones that I'm going to show you. Just soft and diffused and pretty on the skin and they just look so good. Let's recap the Too Faced blushes. <laughs> I did feature this one in a video. This is the Cloud Crush Blurring Blush, which is a complete mouthful. What is it with these names these days of products? But this is the Head in the Clouds. I did show this in a video, and then I did pick up the Candy Clouds um, afterwards. This Candy Clouds is definitely one that is very bright and bold. One that is very hard to get your hands on. It's out of stock. It was out of stock at Sephora, I think on Ulta, also on the Too Faced website. So, 
When I finally saw that it came back in stock, I snagged mine just to see what the fuss is all about. I did try a very similar color like this from Persona. And, you know, you get that same sort of feel. I think the whole Dior blush kind of got a lot of brands coming out with these really bright colors, especially a pink shade like this. And let me show you this one, the Head in the Clouds color, because this one is actually really pretty. It's like a dusty rose color. Really, really nice. Very natural, very everyday. And then Candy Clouds is kind of opposite of the spectrum here. One is natural every day and one is just way out there. However, you see this in the pan and you think there's no way that, that can look natural. There's no way that I'm going to enjoy that. And you'd be surprised. This is beautiful on the skin. It's that kind of almost a natural flush in from the cold kind of vibe. It looks so stinking beautiful on the skin. I just can't. I can't. So I bought them. I have to have it. I bought more in these kind of bright bubblegummy pink shades because I'm like, more is more, right, when it comes to blush. But these are beautiful. The formula, though, I will say is A+. plus. It says blurring blush on the back, and it does. It It's that satiny kind of just yumminess on the skin. Like, it does not look... I don't know how to really describe how it looks it's a satin finish, these two specifically. I think some of the other ones have a more kind of sheen to it, but these are kind of satin, so they're not flat and matte, but they're not dewy. It just, they, it's almost like this blush from Laura Geller. Although Laura Geller has more of a sheen to it, it's the way it sits on the skin, the way it blurs and smooths the skin, and it just looks poreless and just like baby doll skin. That's what it is. It's baby doll skin, okay? It's giving what it needs to give, okay? So if you haven't tried it, try it and thank me later because these are bomb diggity. So let's talk about eyeshadows to kind of wrap this up. Um, I have two palettes. One is just downright ridiculous. Um, I lost my mind. I did. But I will say, in my defense, I do try makeup and I do test things out to recommend to you guys. And it's it's kind of like it's my thing. It's, it's my happy. It's what makes me happy. So I did it, okay? I went for it. I spent the money, it's ridiculous, we'll get to it, okay? You know what, as a matter of fact, let's just, let's just go there right now with the palette. It's the Surat Quad. This is the Beyond Beige. And this, I'm, I don't even know if I wanna even tell you what the price point is on this. This palette is $98. Let, let, that, let that sink in, okay? $98 for four colors. I've heard about Surat here and there over the years, and I thought, you know what, that's that's a little, that's expensive for four eyeshadows, okay? But then I just kept thinking, you know what, those actually look like colors that I would wear every day. L let me, like, completely overlook the fact that I have a whole drawer full of palettes with colors like this. It's called Beyond Beige, for crying out loud. Like, it's very basic, and some might say boring. However, <laughs> this is like a quad of magic. I mean, I don't even know. Like, I absolutely love the way this looks, the way it wears on the eyes, how it blends, just everything about it. It's so crazy to think that these sort of basic boring palettes that I paid $100 for that I have probably similar ones to in my collection already can wow me this way to the point where I have to actually share it in a video because this is incredible. These colors, there is something magical about this formula. It's like silk. It's like blending these eyeshadows. It's, it, it's like butter on the skin. And it, they blend themselves like... I, I don't even know. Like, I feel like I truly am at a loss of words how great this actually is. It's incredible. So you have some sort of basic um, colors here, like this one here that is more of like a kind of grayish tan shade, and that's called grayish. And that is a very perfect transition shade that is a bit on the cooler side. You have one that's a little bit more kind of warm, and we'll get to that. Then the darkest one is called Brun Noir. Um, the names are kind of small. Um, Brun Noir, which is a really pretty, deep, rich, dark brown. 
It's perfect for a crease, for outer V, and for liner, which is the method that I use for this. And the other day I had to get ready pretty quickly because I had to do a Zoom meeting and I thought, what can I grab in my collection that I know is gonna work, it's gonna blend well, and I can get done quickly. And I was able to create a smoky eye. It was not my intention to go that deep and dark because I used this color, this dark brown in my crease. And I thought, why am I doing that today? But when I did that, it just kind of solidified why I love this palette so much because it looked like I had taken a long time to create the look, but I literally did it in five minutes. I did my entire eye look. I took this color, I slapped it in the crease. Not really. I took a brush and I applied it to my crease. And then I took this sort of grige color and blended out the edges, just kind of add a little bit touch of coolness. Did this color on the lid, this brow bone inner corner, liquid liner mascara, boom, done. Five minutes. And it looked like it took a lot longer. Like it was so easy to apply to blend. Let me just let me just show you. Okay. Look at that. That this one has a little bit of sparkle. Actually, no, here. This one has a little bit of sparkle. And it's kind of like a salmony tan. Come on, focus camera. It's like a salmony tan shade with a bit of coral. Why is my camera not focusing? Here we go. Let's get on board with it, Canon. I love the formulation of this. Do I want to try more? Yeah, I do. But does my wallet want me to? No. <laughs> nope. So we're going to kind of scale that back price point wise and go about half of that cost with a palette that I absolutely just adore. When I got this in the mail, it's a, it's a recent launch. I took it out of the packaging and the very next day I started using it. And I honestly cannot stop wearing it. Today I told myself I am going to use something different, but I probably should have for this video. I did share some clips on Instagram that I was chatting about this palette specifically. So you saw the look there. I also did it a sort of sunset look with this palette in a tutorial, which I will link for you as well. Today I'm using the Pat McGrath Mothership uh, palette. This is the Divine Rose. And I had more challenges blending Pat McGrath, I know, crazy, than this. It's the Italian spritz. It is just, I absolutely adore this palette. I have used this nonstop. This is bright, this is fun, this can give you every day, but can also kind of take you out of your normal, everyday, boring box and give you fun, give you those pops of color, give you something punchy, something different. And I just love it. I absolutely love how all these colors play so well together. You can put this sort of marigold, kind of orangey yellow with this blue and it's perfection. You can use these violets and these wines with some of these peach tones and somehow it works. It just is so beautiful there is a smell like a fragrance it's kind of fruity kind of sweet tropical like a an actual drink so it's very fitting for this palette since it's the italian spritz i love the formula this formula for me was easier to blend than it was the mothership palette from from pat mcgrath i know don't come for me i'm just being honest i absolutely adore these colors these metallics, I will say the best way to get the most impact is to use your finger. If you use a brush, you're going to get a light wash and it's really not going to give you what you see in the pan. The finger application method is truly hands down the absolute best. It is night and day difference between a brush and your finger because this feels like a cream. There's something very different in these metallic shadows that feels like a cream. It literally feels like you're putting on a cream shadow that you took out of a little pot or a cream shadow stick. That's what this feels like. And it feels buttery, smooth, and it looks very intense in the palette. When you put it on with your finger, it gives you that elevated foiled effect to the eye. And it's like, it's very mesmerizing and very eye capturing. Like you just, I just can't. I, I absolutely love this. I think I may have to do another video tutorial with this because this is just beautiful. All right, everybody, so that is it. That is the roundup for the reviews for this group of products. And I'm really happy with everything except the foundation bomb is absolutely, it's a hard no. I wouldn't even recommend it. Don't even waste your money, honestly. There's so many other options out there. I just don't feel like it's actually worth a try. But everything else is great and I absolutely am happy that 
the bulk of this video is a positive one. I do try a lot of products. I buy stuff all the time from Ulta, from Sephora, directly from brands' websites, and I constantly have packages arriving all the time because I just love trying all things makeup, and I am just a sucker for pretty much everything makeup-wise because <laughs> I just absolutely love it. If you watched the entire video, thank you so much for watching the entire video, for being here, for clicking on the video, for your support. It means the world to me, and I appreciate you so much for being here and just spending some of your day with me. Thank you for being you, and I hope to see you in my next video. We can be friends and chat on Instagram. Hopefully, I'll see you there. Take care, you guys, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.